Hallelujah. 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 It's good to be in the house where the Lord is. To come together, to gather in his name, to worship him, to magnify him, to lift him up. We come this morning, join together in the presence of God for to enjoy the fullness of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 We just welcome you this morning, those of you that have joined in the sanctuary, those that you have joined on Facebook. We thank you for tuning in and joining us here in the sanctuary as we will experience the presence of God today. We're just so thankful that God has us on his mind this morning. Right. He woke us up, so we should be excited about that. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we should be excited about the fact that we are in the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. Oh, Lord, we just love you so much, and we just welcome you, and thank you for coming this morning and being in this presence, Lord. Lord, shining on us, wrapping us in your arms, giving us your mercy, your grace your goodness, your loving kindness. We just thank you, Lord, because we know that all things are in your hands. And Lord, you are have the control over everything. So we bow down before you. We lift up holy hands unto you to worship you, to give you the praise, the glory that's due your name. We are so excited, amen, hallelujah, about life because God has given us abundance, amen. He is blessing us every day. He is blessing us every moment, every minute. And we just say, thank you, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping us on your mind. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for providing for us. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord, and we want to get closer and closer to you. So as we draw nigh to you this morning and you drawing nigh to us, we thank you, Lord, for pouring out your spirit, your Holy Spirit upon us today, giving us that anointing, Lord, that break yokes and remove burdens, giving us that anointing, Lord God, that meeting us right here where we are, God, so that when we leave this place, we will not leave the same way that we came in here. So whatever it is that you need today, you call on the name of the Lord. You look up to the hills from which cometh our help. You thank him for being right here, right here with you. Amen. Guiding and leading us and helping us and providing for us. We just thank you, Lord, because all things are in your hands and there's nothing that you cannot do. Hallelujah. So we thank you. Even when we're in our weakness, you're stronger. Hallelujah. So we thank you for your peace. We thank you for your joy. Amen. That unspeakable joy that we're going to experience today. Amen. Because we are in the house of the Lord. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So today, worship him. Amen. Lift him up. Magnify him. Amen. We can't live without him. I don't know about you, but I can't live without him. So I'm so thankful and grateful. Amen. For the almighty God, for the Lord Jesus Christ, who went to the cross and died for us, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just pray. Father, we just thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we rejoice and we are glad in it. We thank you, Lord God, that you are right here in the midst of us where you said two or three are gathered together in your name. You're in the midst, so you're in the midst of us today. You are watching over us. You are watching those that have tuned in, and we thank you, Lord. Bless our pastor. Bless the the, the word that's going to come forth today with power and might, oh Lord God, that's going to change the lives of those of us who are hearing. So let us hear with understanding and let us walk in the wisdom that we receive today. Bless her, strengthen her, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord God. All the virtue that will come out of her today, restore it, oh God. And bless each one of these people that are sitting here this day, God, and those that are tuned in. Lord, we need you. And so we thank you. We thank you that whatever we need today, it's not too hard for you, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, to make it happen, to give us the victory, and to cause us to win in this life. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Amen. And Lord God, bless our praise team. Amen. As they come forth to minister in the word. In Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. 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 Bless his name for he's worthy to be praised. How many of 
y'all to believe in God for something. I can't hear you out there. How many of y'all believe in God for something? How many of y'all are ready to say goodbye to some things? Goodbye pain, goodbye sorrow, goodbye hypertension, goodbye diabetes, whatever you are in search for. I believe God because his word is true. If you can stand, help, stand to your feet and help us sing the song called I Believe. Come on and put your hands together.
Fall fresh. Holy Spirit, fall and fall fresh. fresh on me. Fall fresh on me. Oh, 
Thank you for filling us this morning, oh God. 
Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for your gift in this morning, Lord God. Hey, oh, bless your name, Lord. You're worthy of praise. You're worthy of glory. Hallelujah. None can match you, God. You are matchless, God. None can compare to you, God. None can compare to your greatness, your goodness. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless and praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. You are the God. Thank you, Jesus. 
worship him this morning as we have worshiped him in spirit and in truth. Come on and give him a hand clap of praise. Come on and praise God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him. Amen. He's loving. Amen. Come on and bless his name. We want to go right ahead and just go ahead and worship him a little bit more. Our tithes and offerings this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. That said, I never come before the Lord uh, empty handed, not give him something that hasn't cost me something. So we come this morning, amen, to give up our tithes and our offerings. And uh, there's a number of ways that you can do it. You can go to the website, www.iministries.org, give through PayPal. You can also give through uh, Gillify, which is a free app that you can download, put in the name of the church, and you will be able to give. You can also give through Cash App, dollar. God, amen. Amen. And then you can also mail it to P.O. Box 20781, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27420. Amen. And so we just thank the Lord this morning that we're able to give, to be a blessing to this house of God, to bring our uh, gift and our tithes and our offerings into the storehouse where there may be meat in this place. Amen. So that we can do what God desire for us to do. Amen? Amen. 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 So we thank you, Father, that as we have given, and Lord God, that what we have, have given today has been given, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And Lord God, as you will touch men to give back into our hearts, oh Lord God, and into our lives, Lord God. Lord, it will be measured by the, the way that we have given today. So we thank you for the hundredfold return. Amen. On our giving in Jesus' name. Now, come on and put your hands together as we receive the offerings, amen, and our tithes today, uh, and as we have given, amen, with a cheerful heart, amen. So, would you keep your hands together as we welcome Pastor Yvette, amen, Pastor Lo, as she comes forward to bring us a word today. Awesome word, amen. Amen. Truly, we give honor and reverence to the Spirit of the Lord that is in this place on this morning. Hallelujah. Thank God also, amen, just for the, the release of the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. To set direction and to set course coming from prophetess and apostle. Amen. Come on, we bless God. Amen. Come on, let's bless God for the servants of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen, amen. Go ahead and take your seats, amen, in the presence of the Lord. Um, he is really and truly in this place for today. Listen, we want to direct your attention, amen. I also want to give reverence, amen, to um, some special people that is in my life who is here on today. Um, it's always an honor and a privilege when we have mom and dad in the house, amen. So we honor mom and dad. Hallelujah. Also, our grandmother, uh, known as affectionately by us as Mom Blanche. Then we also have our other grandmother, we call her Mom Rogers. <laughs> so we want to thank them again for gracing us here in Burlington, North Carolina, uh, with their presence on today. So it's good to know that I have uh, still some family members, amen, who is in my corner and cheering us on here in Burlington at God's Eye Ministries. I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of First Kings. And we want to look at chapter 19. And I'm going to pull my glasses off for a moment. Uh, First Kings chapter number 19. We're going to kind of skip around a little bit in this verse, in this chapter, I mean. Uh, we want to begin at verse number 14. We're going to probably read down to 14. I'm going to skip over and go to verse 18. So we're going to begin at verse 9 down to verse 14. And then we're going to skip to verse 18. So beginning at verse number 9, and it says, He came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, 
For the children of Israel had forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I am very, I have been very jealous for the Lord of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down their, thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even only I, am left. They seek my life to take it away. Let's drop down to verse number 18. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. All the knees which have not bowed to Baal. And every mouth which hath not kissed him. Father, we thank you for your word on this day. We pray now, God, that you will continue to pour into your woman servant, even as she decreased, that you may increase in me. I thank you now, God, that this word, God, that it shall not fall upon deaf ears, but it shall move them to where you need them to be. In Jesus' name. And somebody say amen. 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 Today I want to talk to you from the title of Your Move. Somebody say your move. Your move. Your move. It's your move. It is your move. I close my Bible when I'm going to need it, but I'm going to ask my son. He's going to have to help me with these scriptures here. Um, I'm quite sure most of us have come to a point or a time in our life where we felt as though we were hemmed in, right? You come to a point where there was seemed to be no other options that was left available. You have played your last hand. Um, if you have ever been in a situation where you felt like you were trapped, I know I had. Yeah. In a situation where you felt as though that you were trapped, it fosters some um, type of heart-throbbing emotions, did it not? Especially if you were trapped and it was of a life or a death situation. Uh, this is where even this great man of God named Elijah found himself so that it will let us know then because it happened to this great man, it will not exempt you no matter your position in life. It will not exempt you no matter your demographics, your social economic standing or the title that is behind your name. Even the prophet had reached a point in his life when he did not even see his next move. He felt as though that there was no escape from the threat that was upon his life by one named Jezebel. Um, I began to think about this particular text on this week. And I, as I began to ponder, what I began to visualize was that of a chessboard. That's what I saw. Now, mind you, I don't know anything about chess. I know how to play checkers. All right? So, you know, being the good person that I am, I go to someone who is knowledgeable. So I had to go to El Alo. And I had to ask El Alo about the purpose or the game of chess. And so some things that he began to share with me is that chess is it's not like checkers because 
Chess is something that is rather complex. It's going to take patience when you're trying to play the game. When we play checkers, we can play it kind of simply and it can go kind of quick, right? So chess then, it is this game of skill. Elder said that, you know, what you're trying to do is you're trying to isolate or to uh, have your king man to be standing alone so that you can be able to declare checkmate. In this instance, the opponent then, it has no more moves left. Am I doing okay, Elder? It, it, the opponent has no more moves left. They have played the last play, and then they are then succumbed to defeat. Now, there is another form of defeat in which when, if the player himself feels as though that they have no other moves, they can resign. And they resign either by laying the king man down or knocking him down. And then they have come to the conclusion that there is not a chance that I can save the king. This sounds so much like life itself, doesn't it? Because the enemy himself is seeking to declare checkmate upon us. When we have been hemmed in, when we have been trapped even by the vicissitudes of life. We all experience changing of seasons. Some of us are in a season change even now. I'm not talking about fall, winter, spring, or summer, but I'm talking about a spiritual season change that we come upon. We all in life will have our ups, and we all in life will have our downs, will we not? We all in life will go through some high points, some momentous occasion. And we will find ourselves yet in the low place. We will find ourselves in the valley low. You will find yourself even in a pit. You will find yourself when you feel as though there is no way out. This game called life, guess what? It did not start with you. It did not start with us. But this is a game, amen, uh, 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 that started in yet eternity past. It was an opposition by God and Satan. It was God who moved in creation. We know in Genesis 1 and 1 where it says, you know, how darkness and God moved on something. So God moved in creation. I want you to know that when there is a force, there is always going to be a force that is in opposition to you. And even though God moved, Satan also moved. Satan moved, we know, by uh, whispering into the ear of Eve and deceiving her. Uh, and we know, amen, that the enemy, he moved in order to destroy what God had created. But someone say, then God moved again. And when God moved again, God said, I'm going to establish me a nation to perpetuate my name or to keep my name always in remembrance. And Satan moved even on that to destroy God's chosen people and to change their heart yet towards God. Then God moved again. Someone said, God is moving. God is moving. Yes, he is. Uh, 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 God moved in order so I'm going to restore not just the nation, but I'm going to be restore mankind back unto myself. And even in God restoring mankind, Satan moved again. He made a move that he thought was checkmate. When I look at this word checkmate, in the Arabic, it means the king has died. In the Arabic, it also means your time has come. You will be destroyed. But I needed someone to declare on this afternoon that God has one move left. Uh, many of us feel like this Elijah. Elijah felt as though there was no escape. Elijah felt as though that his life was over, even after he had completed a great feat on Mount Carmel. Carmel. It was here when he defeated the prophets of Baal. And because this had gotten back to Ahab and to Jezebel, they said unto him, just as you have slew our servants, so they will also do the same to him. The Bible says that Elijah saw this happening to him. Now, I want you to know sometimes that we have the greatest defeat that we have to mount over is in our own mind. 
it is in our own thinking that sometimes will hold us. Our own thinking will sometimes hold you down. So that's why the Bible tells us that we need not to be conformed to this world, but we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Why is that so? The Bible says, so that we may prove what is that good, perfect, and the acceptable will of God. God wants you moving in not what you think you know, but he wants you to move in a surety of his word. There is a different sense of God when you think you know something. Why? Because the Bible says unto us that our ways are not his ways, and our thoughts are not his. His thoughts are so much higher than what our thoughts are. You don't know everything that is to be known. God is the one who is omniscient. God is the one who knows all, sees all. And because he is the mastermind behind everything, our solution, our response should be to walk therein and be submitted. Elijah felt as though there was no, no way of escape. God himself had a move that he wanted to play. Now, we are familiar with 1 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 where it says that there is no temptation that has overtaken you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. Let me say that again. And God is faithful. He is faithful that he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Amen. But when you are tempted, notice he said that, but when you are, he don't want you to think that because you're on God's side that you will not face temptation, that you will not face trials. They are going to come. But when they come, but with the temptation, he will also make a way of escape. Ah, he will make a way of escape so that you can endure it. Who's making the way of escape? God is. He is making the way. The king is making the way of escape. The king has one move left. You know when God moves, God can shut the mouth of your enemy. When God moves, God can shut the mouth of those who doubt you and your potential. When God moves, he can take you from a low place to yet a high place. It is when God moves, you need to say to yourself that the enemy cannot have me. No, no, no. The enemy cannot have me, cannot have my husband, cannot have your wife, your children, cannot have. Hallelujah. But Elijah is just like many of us, where we allow our focus to shift. Uh, how many know the problems and pressures that, you know, when it becomes too much for us, the enemy desire is to shift our attention off of God. He don't want us to see what the bigger picture is. Amen. What do we do? We began then to focus on the small stuff. Yeah. We focus on the little things. We focus on the problem and not the problem solver. Right. We focus on our sickness and not on the healing. Yeah. We focus, amen, on those who left us versus the one who said he will never leave us nor forsake yeah. you. We focus on the little things. When we focus on the little things, we cannot see God working in the midst of everything. Amen. And so therefore, when we are surrounded by chaos, we think that God is unaware of what is going on. Listen, even in the midst of trouble, in the, even in the midst of storm, even in the midst of your trial, God is not unaware as to what is happening around you, what is happening to you. Matter of fact, it all may fit perfectly in his will. It was Paul who prayed three times for something to leave him. But he, Paul had to recognize, well, God, your grace then is sufficient for me. But we don't like 
like it when God puts us in trouble. We don't like it when God puts us in the midst of confusion. We, we don't like it when uh, there is a test of our faith. When trials come, we probably say unto God, do you have to use this method? The method in which God uses in order to show himself mighty in your life. What methods have you had to uh, uh, go through for you to know that God was a deliverer? What did you have to go through in your body to know that God is a healer? What did you have to go through in your life when you got down to the bottom to let you know that God will supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus? What was the method that God showed himself powerful in your life, that God showed himself to be sovereign? It may not have been the method that you would have chosen, but God is not out of moves. God is not out of options. God is a sovereign God. It is God who is working on your behalf, Sister Rita. It is God who is fighting for you, Sister Melissa. Matter of fact, in Hebrews 13, 5, he said that I will never leave you, nor would I ever forsake you. In Psalms 118 and verse number 6, the Lord is on my side. And if the Lord is on your side, what do you have to feel? If the Lord is on your side, why do you worry about what man can do unto you? If God is on your side, who can be against you? He is more than the whole world. As long as you got Jesus, some will say, I don't need nobody else. Hallelujah. The question is, do you believe it? Hallelujah. I heard some yes. Hallelujah. We believe that the Lord is on our side. And not only that, listen, we can go through this Bible and we can find testimony of others to let you know that when the enemy has declared checkmate on your life, that your king has died, you can boldly cry out, my God has one who left. Come on, my God. Has one move left. Come on, my God is not dead. But he is still yet alive. And he's working and moving and living on the inside of me. Come on, you need to stand up on your feet and say, I know my redeemer lives. Hallelujah. And he's living right inside of me. Hallelujah. We can say that ain't no checkmate. Hallelujah. This game is not over. My life is not over. Some of you can say my life has only just begun in Jesus Christ. I want you to know. I want to give you some testimony to let you know, amen, that God said I have one rule left. Uh, we don't know Job, don't we? We know Job was faced with crisis upon crisis. Job was faced with loss upon loss. Hallelujah. Joy. It was Job who said, hallelujah, that even on his deathbed, hallelujah, that I'm going to trust God in spite of it all. I'm going to trust God. Yet you slay me, still will I trust in you. But can you imagine in the back of his mind, hallelujah, it was the enemy who's laughing, the enemy who has his king in his hand, and the Satan himself, the enemy, is saying, checkmate. I got him now. Checkmate. His life is over. His life is finished. There is nothing else left. I've taken everything that this man ever loved in his life. I've taken his children. I've taken his cattle. I've left him with even sickness and sores even on his bed. But God had one room left. God had one room left. Hallelujah. God said, Job, after this, he said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you with twice as much as you had. Why? Because I believe in my redeemer. Hallelujah. It was Joseph who was rejected even by his brothers. It was Joseph, amen, that his brothers left him inside of a pit. Hallelujah. Some Egyptians came and sold him into slavery. Uh, he got to Potiphar's house 
and he even got placed in the prison. He faced false imprisonment for something he did not even do. There are some of us who will hold ourselves in not a physical imprisonment, but in a mental imprisonment. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We will cage ourselves in. Hallelujah. We will block off, amen, what God is trying to get to us based on what has happened to us in the past. But God said if you can release, my God, if you can release, hallelujah. And that's what Joseph had to do. Joseph had to release everyone that rejected him. That means he had to release his family. He had to release his brothers. He even had to release his father Isaac. He had to release. And in the release, amen, even though Satan was saying checkmate, God said, I got one more move. I got one more move in your life, Joseph. You may have been in the pit. You may have been in prison. But I'm about to give you a promotion. And in the promotion, hallelujah, that Joseph faced, Joseph was able to feed the nation. He was able to feed even the ones who rejected him. Moses was one who lacked self-confidence. Ah, uh, y'all know Moses. Ah, uh, Moses had a speech impediment. He thought he was unworthy. God, are you sure you want to use me? Because I can't talk so good. Pastor Lord can't talk so good. But God can still use you in what you seem to be lacking in. It was Moses who even called, considered, or he questioned his calling because he committed a murder. And he tried to cover it up. Hallelujah. And then it caused him to go on the backside of a desert. He was forced to stay there for some years until God, hallelujah, had an encounter with him. But before the encounter, the enemy was saying, checkmate, Moses. I got you because I got you on the run. How many does the Satan have you on the run? Because of something that happened in your past, something that you refused to get over, amen. God say, once you get over it, I'm able to use you as a mighty deliverer. I'm able to use you to bring others, people like you, out of their bondage. Do you understand? Checkmate. But he said, no, 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 no. I'm going to use Moses in the great exodus. I'm going to use Moses to bring my people out of Egypt. I'm going to use Moses to go before the Pharaoh and to speak, let my people go. And when he let my people go, Moses is going to see my hand move again. Moses, all you have to do is lift up the hand that has the rod, and you're going to see how I'm able to divide even the rivers. You're going to see how I'm able to allow the waters to stand up on both sides and watch the people pass on dry, dry ground. Hallelujah. God said, I got another move left. Hallelujah. You need to allow me to work that one move in your life. That one move that is able to bring separation between what's trying to kill you and where I'm trying to take you. Hallelujah. It was in Moses. When the people crossed the Red Sea, he looked back and he saw Pharaoh's army was chasing them. And God said, watch what I'm about to do now. The same people who was chasing them, God allowed the rivers, the sea, to come back. And they saw them not again. God is able to do that to your own enemies. Hallelujah. So that you will not see or face them again. Someone said, your move. Your move. Uh, God also moved in the life of Abraham. Uh, Y'all know Abraham, the one who left Haran. He said, Abraham, I need you to get thee up out of this country, and I need you to go to a place that I'm sending you. I need you to go to a place called there. But we know some things happen in the midst.
midst of Abraham's journey into the promised land. Uh, we know God told him that you would be a father of many nations. God told him, shared with him his heart, his will for his life. Not only his life, but for his wife, Sarah's life. Uh, but Abraham, somewhere down the line, began to doubt God's ability. And he took matters into his own hands. How many of us sometimes, we're waiting on God to move. We're waiting on God to do something. And we want to get ahead of God. And we do it our own way. That's what Abraham did. Uh, he promised him a seed. And in the promising of the seed that God had promised to Abraham, he said, God is taking a little too long. Me and my wife were getting a little bit too old now, so he had an Ishmael. Uh, he had something that God did not command, that God did not orchestrate, that, that God did not purpose in his life. So we have to wait until the purpose was birthed forth. I want you to know that there is something that is about to be birthed forth in your life. Purpose is being birthed in this season. Your Isaac is coming. Come on, declare, my Isaac is coming. My Isaac is coming. My purpose is being birthed on the inside. Huh. But because the enemy said checkmate prematurely, God said, my one move, I'm able to establish covenant. Because of Abraham's faithfulness, we have the covenant promise. We have the promises of God. Hallelujah. Abraham teaches us when not to move. <laughs> Don't move on your own. Don't move unless it's in obedience to God and what his will and purpose is for your life. It was Daniel saw the one move of God. There are going to be times when you get tested in your level of devotion. There's going to be times when you're going to be tested. Are you going to follow the system of the world or are you going to be following the kingdom principle? Daniel knew in the God that he served. They wanted him to bow down to some false idol. No, 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 no. Uh, Daniel was like, the scripture tells me that thou shalt not have any graven image. Uh, the Bible tells us that we should love the Lord God with everything that is within us. So Daniel said, I only have one God, and that is the God of Israel. And I'm going to pray yet unto him. Matter of fact, I want you to see me pray to my God. Let me go and put up this window because it ain't no shame in my day. I ain't ashamed of the God that I serve. Well, you know, somebody always watching you. Uh, somebody always watching to see how you going to defy, yes. hallelujah, the laws of the land. Yes. Well, somebody saw Daniel doing what was not supposed to be done. And so they decided they're going to throw Daniel in the lion's den. The enemy was saying, checkmate. 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 Daniel, you're about to get eaten up alive. Someone say, but God had one move left. One move left. Hallelujah. Even when you're in the midst of a raging lion's den, God is there to preserve you. God is there to keep you. God is there to sustain your life in the midst when the enemy comes in. Hallelujah. When he seems like to be that worry and raging lion seeking to devour you. God is able to keep you. He's able to keep you in safe places. So we'll say God has one move. One move. Even in the Bible. David was even tested. Now I hope through these scenarios that you can see perhaps where you sit. Perhaps where you once was. And, and, and you see how the enemy was trying to already say, your king is dead. I, I got your king. <laughs> Uh, it's over. I got you here and then. You trapped now. There is no way of escape for you. David was tested. David was called at a young age 
You hear me, young people? David was called at a young age. Yes. Said that he was going to be king, ruler over Israel. Hmm. And of course, you know, it took about 17 years for him to reach this fulfillment. And even after, David was tested in his purpose. David was tested in his assignment. He's a king. It's not that a king should do anything and get away with it. Even the presidents. you think that you and I are going to get over right, on the right. living God. Yeah, yeah. David was one who saw Bathsheba from a distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that Bathsheba became pregnant. David didn't quite like that. He was about to be found out. So David had the husband of Bathsheba murdered. So now the enemy is ready to issue a checkmate. How I thought you were supposed to be the man after God's own heart. But you an adultery. I thought you were supposed to be the man after God's own heart, but yet you are a murderer. I thought you were the man after God's own heart. Who are you now, David? Now yeah, you're here on your face. Now you're in here crying out to God because the child done died. It was your fault. Well, what am I going to do, Lord? There's always, if you will allow, what rescued David was he heeded the voice of a prophet. Your purpose, your assignment, once we feel as though that we messed up, that we cannot get back to God, your next move can lie in the mouth of a prophet that is able to restore you, that is able to put you back where you messed up. God said, I got a move left. I'm not, not going to leave my servant David right here. God said, there's a kingdom on the inside of him. Do you hear me? There is a kingdom on the inside of him. We know that from the loins of David was birthed out the lineage of Christ. The seed that was so, that was already prophesied. The seed that was going to bruise the very head of the enemy. The kingdom. When you're with God, someone say, I always win. I always win. You always win. You always win. God always win. It doesn't matter what dream you have. Listen, your dreams, your, your, oh man, your dreams, your aspirations, your goals, your hopes, the promises, all of those are at stake. All of that is at stake. And the enemy is going to use every one of them to try to destroy you. He's going to use them in order to destroy me. It's his mission. It's his goal in life to steal, kill, and to destroy. Someone say, but. But uh, God has the power to deliver you. And yet God has the power to defeat your enemy. And when God does that, listen. It is only positioning you to be blessed. Do you hear me? The enemy will use these things to destroy you, but in the end, it will be used to defeat him. Mm. Positioning you to be in the center of God's will. There is nothing that is impossible. Y'all know it. There is nothing that is impossible with God. And we have to know that God is never done. Do you hear me? God is never done. Matter of fact, God has not done all that he knows how to do. Thing is, when we've done all, someone say, God can. God can. Why? Because there is always more to God. Turn to Habakkuk 3 right quick. 
Don't matter of fact, you don't have to turn there. You don't have to turn there. You don't have to turn there. But just write down Habakkuk 3, uh, verses 3 and 4. Habakkuk 3, verses 3 and 4. In this particular verse, it, uh, it is showing how God is expressing himself. All right? In this particular verse, God is expressing himself. God is showing his glory. But he did not stop just, you know, um, um, at, at one expression. He kept on going. So God was able to show his glory. He was able to show his glory in the heavens. He was able to show his glory in the earth. He didn't stop there. Amen. But then it said that then he came as a brightness of light. He didn't stop there. Then it says horns appeared even out of his hands. Yo, God does not want to hide anything from you. Amen. He doesn't want to hide anything from you. Amen. He wants to show you who he is. Amen. Amen. Someone say, there is more. There is more. And he wants to do even more yet through you. Yes. I need you to shout, shout greater. Greater. Come on, shout greater again. Greater. Come on, shout greater. Greater. You need to know that your future is greater than your past. Yes. Amen? Amen. Your future is greater than any test. Your future is greater than any trial that you go through. Your future is greater than any disaster that you face. Your future is greater than any difficulty you find yourself in. Shout again, greater. greater. Your assignment, you have to know that it is greater. Your calling that God has on your life, it is greater. Your destiny is greater when you understand and realize the greatness that lies on the inside of you. It should cause you to want to act. It should cause you to want to do more, to do better than what you're doing right now. What are you doing? Oh, my God. Greater. Come on, if you believe that, say, God, I agree with your plan. God, I agree with your plan. Come on, God, I agree with your plan. God, I agree with your plan. His plan, Jeremiah 29, his plan is not to harm you. He said, well, I know the plans, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Yeah. Thoughts not of evil, but to give you hope, to give you a future, to give you that expected end. Yeah. Hallelujah. I agree with the plan of God. He desires for you to win in life. Amen. 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 He doesn't want to see you fail nor fall. He wants to see you succeed, yes. reaching your goal. Amen. He wants you to live. Amen. Say live. live. Come on, one more time. Say live. live. That's it, Sister Martha. Live. live. Hallelujah. And have life more abundantly. Yeah. He come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Someone say, God has another move. Doesn't matter where you are. If you're losing everything, God has another move. Hallelujah. If you're deep in sin, God has another move. If you're in a weeping season, God has another move. He said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You need to know that there shall be glory after this. I say it again. There shall be glory after this. Come on, turn to Romans 8 and 18 right quick. Romans 8, 18. This okay? Yes. Hallelujah. All from a chessboard. Hallelujah. Jesus. Chess. I don't know if I'm going to learn how to play chess or not. I don't know. Romans 8, 18, it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to reveal to us and in us and for us and conferred on us. 1 Peter 5 and verse number 10. 1 Peter 5 and verse 10. And after, when? After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts all blessing and favor, who has called you to his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself 
complete and make you what you ought to be. Uh, you to is us uh, establish and ground it and secure it and strengthen it and he will settle you. Take a look at Hebrews 12 and verse number 11. Hebrews 12 and verse number 11. And it says, now, I'll give you time. Yeah, okay. Hebrews 12, verse number 11. And it says, now, no chastening for the present seem to be joyous. Who likes going through it? <laughs> but it's rather grievous. It's hard. Mm. But it says, but afterwards, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness, which is in conformity to God's will in purpose, thought, and action. Joel 2. You have to turn there. Joel 2. Joel 2. It just says that it just says that God will restore unto you the years that the canker worm, that the locust, that the caterpillar have eaten up. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. If you can get that in the amplified version. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 in the amplified version. Where it says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. So that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient. Possessing enough to require no end support and furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. If you really look for me, God will plenty for you. God has one more breath. I, Elisha, was able to see the one move that God had. It may not happen in his time, but the prophecy was spoken to Elijah. You're not the only one. God had preserved hundreds of individuals who have not bowed their knee yet unto them. God has one more even left for you today. Some of you may think that it is over. You may think, amen, that the king, your king has been taken. But someone say, my king live. My king live. My king live. My Listen, king live. There is a king of king and there is a king on the inside of you. Amen. 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 We all are kings in here. Yes. You hear me? Amen. We all are kings. You are a child of the king. Amen. And God is even saying unto Satan, you thought you won. Hey, God. You may have thought you won. But someone say that, that the war has begun, but the battle has already been won. God has already deemed and claimed victory. Hallelujah. Satan may be laughing and thinking, checkmate, that I got him right where I want him. But it's not over. When God said that I love the world so much that I'm giving you my son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but they shall have everlasting life. Uh, and you know, when they arrested Jesus, Satan was like checkmate. Uh, but someone say it's not over. It's not over. It's not over. It is not over. And just like it wasn't over then, it's not over for you today either. Amen. Because Satan messed up. Yes. They messed up when they allowed him to be whipped. Yes. They messed up when they bruised him. Yes. They uh, uh, messed up when they beat him with the uh, uh, with the cat of tails and with thirty nine stripes. They made the wrong move. Why do you say they made the wrong move? Because the word declares by his stripes, I am healed. He made the wrong move. They made the wrong move when they hung him on the cross. Uh, he said, if I be lifted up, I'm going to draw all men. Uh, they made the wrong move when they put him inside of the tomb. Hmm. Because it was inside the tomb where we say that he defeated Hades. He went in and he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. They messed up when they left him in their body for three whole days. 
He said, if you destroy this temple in three days, I'm going to do what? I'm going to raise it up again. I want you to know that it is a checkmate, not on you, but it's a checkmate, sir, on the enemy. Because our Christ, he rose again on the third day with all power, yet in his hands. And I want you to know, saints of God, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that lives on the inside of you. It's the same God that raised Jesus is the same God that is able to do great and mighty in your life. Matter of fact, the scripture says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think according to the power that is at work in you. I want to add that power that is now at work in you. The power is now at work in you. You. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Someone say, your move. Your move. Your move. What are you going to do now with the instructions that God has left? That's the move that God is waiting. God says, I've done the work. But now it's your move. The enemy is already being defeated. But now it's your move. Mm. Mm. Some of you, God is waiting to move, waiting for you to move. When you move, it's going to be a life changing move. When you move, it's going to be a burden bearer lifting move. When you move, it's going to be a sin eradicating move. What did God say? God said, if you desire me, you have to move. If you desire me, you have to come. If you want me, you have to come to me. As a matter of fact, he even said, but those who want me, you have to first deny yourself, take up your cross, and you have to follow me. He said, in closing for today, some of you who perhaps need to make a choice, to make a conscious decision, even concerning your soul on today. God is saying it's your move. I've already defeated the enemy for you. Yes, there's going to be testing trials that's going to come. But I hope that you saw yet through the testimony, some of these scriptural accounts, that God was able to deliver. God is able to deliver you in whatever circumstance, situation that you are in right now. If you don't know what your next move should be, listen, we have someone who is all knowing. Come and connect with your maker, the one who has already penned and transcribed your purpose for living. It's simple. Your move. He said if you confess your sins, he even says that I'll be faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Someone say your move. He said all you have to do is just make a faith confession with your mouth and believe in your heart and you're going to be saved. It's your move. You may say, hey pastor, I'm backslidden. Guess what? He said, I'm married to you. I've never left you. It's your move. You desire a church home, someone to love on you. He said, I always desire to add to my body, to my church, so that it can be strengthened and grow healthy. It's your move. Even you on Facebook, listen, today can also be your day. It can be your day where God is asking you and he needs for you to make a move. If anyone in here, if you're sensing, hey, it's my move. It's my move. Come on, you can come back to this altar. Amen. And we want to pray with you. Amen. We want God to help you. I want you to know that the Lord is on your side, that God is working for you. God is fighting for you.
God is cheering for you. God wants you to win. Amen. Is there one on this afternoon? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. Hallelujah. Well, Father God, we thank you for this. We thank you, God, that we are also able to, to stand in proxy for someone else. Hallelujah, God. So we thank you. Hallelujah. We call thou his name. And I pray his blood will get unto you even now. I'm even reminded about the servant who came to me. And he said that his child was at home sick. That he didn't need you to go. But if you just speak the word. And it happened that somebody. So God, we thank you that you are able, God, to heal. You are the Jehovah Rapha, God. We pray, God, that you will go and, God, and release, God, continual healing yet upon his body. God, we thank you for breakthrough in every area. We pray, God, that even, God, that you will uh, 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 just, God, attend, God, to his mental state as well. We thank you, Father, that he has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And we cover him now in the blood of Jesus from the top of his head down to the very sole of his feet. In Jesus' name, and we say amen, amen. and so shall it be. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God. Father, we thank you, God, for your woman servant even standing here. We pray, God, that, that, that you will bring direction and, and guidance, God, into the purpose yet in life. God, we will pray it now, God, that even with a firm foundation in which she stands upon, let her know, God, that no other ground is yet sinking sand. We thank you, God, God, that you are about even now, God, to reveal yet unto her. Reveal unto her, God, even in the night season, what it is now, God, that keeps God being the hindrance that keep God just being God, that thorn yet in her flesh. So I thank you, Father God, that you will continue to release your hand yet upon her life. Release God, your hand, God, so that she may be able, God, to be able to experience the windfall yet of your blessings. And I thank you now, oh God, that you are even breaking away, God, those ties. That you are breaking away the ties, oh God. Those ties, oh God, the soul ties even now. God, so when you break this, when you release, God, that chain that is there, I pray, God, that even every corner of her mind, hallelujah, that it shall be renewed even now, so that she not go back, God, to that old way, that she not revert back, oh God, to the old way of thinking even now. We give you glory and we give you praise for newness in Jesus' name. Amen. to be your God, even in the day when they do come trouble, God, even in the night when they seek to be mean, they seek to lie, but they are so human. When they do wrong, God, when they do the wicked, God, they are so human and outspoken, it is always like a trick, God, and even in the night, God, I pray, God, that you 
Glory and thanks unto God. Hallelujah. The awesome God that we serve. Hallelujah. Listen, I want to thank you all, amen, for being here at God's Eye Ministry. We are a ministry where we say we value what God values, and that is what? And that's lies. So that means you are important yet unto us. We want to invite you at any time to God's Eye Ministries here at 2377 Corporation Parkway. Uh, you are also welcome to visit us, I mean to, to join us in on our Bible study, which is on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. It is via our conference line and also via Zoom. Uh, you can find that information yet on our Facebook page, uh, also on our website. We will be glad to have you join in. Also, our ministry is also doing a Monday through Friday prayer that is at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please join in with us as we do have intercessors who are waiting to pray for you. So we want to bless you, amen, in Jesus' name. Is everyone okay? Yeah. Hallelujah. You okay, my Rogers? All right. You okay, my Blanche? All right, all right, all right. Bless the Lord. Listen, can I just have you before we leave just to stretch your arms, hands over here in this direction? Hallelujah. We have them both, both mothers, amen, both the mothers, amen. God, we pray strength even now, God, to these mothers here. God, we pray even now, God, that you will just restore to them, touch their bodies even now, strengthen them in the area where they are all weak even now. I pray now, God, that you will continue to sustain them. They already know, God, that you have been their shepherd. God, I thank you, God, that they have not been in need for anything. So I thank you, God, that you have made a way, God, yet for them, yet down through the years. Keep on doing that, God, and we will continue to bless you, God, in your keeping power. We thank you for favor that is upon their lives, God. Even, God, in the season of their life that they are in, we speak life, we speak health, we speak strength now. In the name of Jesus. And come on, saints of God, you say amen. amen. Thanks be unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, we thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for the season, saints. Amen. amen. Listen, I want to see you back here Sunday morning at 1130 a.m. as we still rejoice in our God. Amen. 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 Come on, let's stand on our feet here. We're about to be dismissed. Amen. Amen. Father, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you now, God, that you will continue to be with us. We, God, thank you for your protection all the week long. We pray that this will be a blessed week, a good week, a week, God, where we shall see your hand move like never before. We want God to be able to tell our enemy, checkmate. Hallelujah. So we walk in total victory. We walk in glory now in Jesus' name. And we say amen, amen. and amen. Come on, y'all know great.